In order to clap, this dude has to defeat this girl's ex-boyfriends. And they're built different. Meet Scott Pilgrim and his band called Sussy Babam. Okay, the word sussy should actually be another word that uh, ends with the letter X. The drummer, Kim Pine, went out with Scott in high school. Steven Stills is the talent, and young Neil lives there and hangs out with the band. Okay, we can consider some of them as omp, maybe even bomb, but where's the sussy part? Scott tells him about his new girlfriend Knives Chow, a 17-year-old high schooler, five years younger than him. Ouch, so that's the sussy part? I've googled it so you don't have to. The age of consent in Canada is actually 16. But don't worry, they haven't done it yet. Didn't even hold hands. What do they do then? Scott shares he likes going out with her because it's simple. I get it. No expensive gifts needed. Buy her a teddy bear or a bottle of cider and hold her hair while she throws up. Knives arrives to listen to how the band rocks, immediately turning into a huge fan. Uh, not sure. I'm more into psychedelic heavy mountain Latino rock. Scott comes into his apartment. We meet his gay roommate Wallace Wells who shares a bed with Scott. Hmm, Scott is so lucky not to be clapping yet. Before Wallace hears any rumors, Scott shares that he is dating a high school girl and asks him not to say it to his sister Stacy. Wallace writes an SMS, and Scott immediately gets a call from his sis. That's how gay friends work, I guess. His sis asks if that's how Scott gets over a girl who dumped him a year ago, but Scott isn't sure. The next day, Scott meets Knives on a classic high school date at a video games club. You know, things were different back when I was a high schooler. We also used to roll at video game clubs instead of classes, but it was more like a nightclub with hot chicks and booze. Because that's why I never finished school. In the music store, Knives asks about the Clash at Demon Hen group, and we found out that Scott used to date the lead singer, Envy Adams, and she broke his heart. Knives didn't get that. She's 17 after all. Brain leaves the scene when hormones kick in. Scott is pretty slow, too. He doesn't make the next step. Or maybe he waits before Knives turns 18. Someone tell him about the age of consent. But first, a message from our sponsor. Raid Shadow Legends has taken over and gaming will never be the same again. Raid is the first game to bring a true console level experience to your phone. They've set the bar high and there's no going back. Explore millions of champion combinations and master countless tactics as you take on raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles, and PvP arena matches. With hundreds of artifacts to equip and over 600 champions blessed with unique skills, you can build your team, develop your champions, and raid your way. I've been playing Raid for a while now, and these are some of the champions I've been using. There's Sithalia, a great support champion. She's useful everywhere, but especially in PvP, thanks to her many turn meter manipulation skills. And let's not overlook Raglan. Raglan is without a doubt the best reviver in Raid. She revives a single target, fills their turn meter, and gives them a bit of health. But the best part? It has a two turn cooldown, making her the fastest reviver period. What's new in the game? Well, there's a ton happening in Raid this month. They're bringing out five badass looking new champions that I can't wait to get my hands on. They're overhauling the champion vault, and they've got a load of awesome smaller updates as well. On top of that, Raid's running a huge series of summer splash events for the whole month, where you can get your hands on some incredible skins for everyone's favorite dwarf, Trunda. This is actually the best time to get started in Raid, and if you click my link in the description or scan my QR code here on the screen, we'll get unique bonuses worth $30. As far as bonuses, we're talking a free epic champion, Virgus, 200k silver, 1 energy refill, and 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient shards who can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. All this treasure will be waiting for you here, and it's that easy. Just click the link in the description and I'll see you in the game. Thanks again to Raid, and now back to the video. Scott gets knives to his secret place. The spooky garage looks perfect for inviting 70. Okay, I can't say that. Apparently, it's a no girls allowed kind of place. I guess that's where Wallace brings his high school boyfriends. However, Scott shows Knives the home where he grew up, a cozy home across the street. Looks like a place Hagrid from Harry Potter could dream of. Later at night, Scott dreams of being alone in the desert when suddenly a girl with hot pink hair roller skates by. Scott wakes up excited and tells Wallace, who sleeps in the same bed, and other Scott, Wallace's boyfriend. Now I understand why Scott simply has no energy left for Knives. The next day, Scott meets Knives at the library. He sees the mysterious pink-haired girl again, now for real. At night, the Virgin Band goes to Julie Power's house party to hang out with record people. Scott is bored. No high school girls here. Scott finds Komu, who knows everyone and shows him a picture he drew of the pink-haired girl he saw. Komu says it's Ramona Flowers, and she'll be at the party tonight. Awesome. Another girl he's definitely not gonna clap. Scott goes around the party and finally finds her, trying to hit on her and failing, retreating like a total loser. Another soldier down. F in the chat, boys. Scott keeps asking around about this girl. All people know is that she's a tough score, American, has a job at Amazon, and just broke up with a guy called Gideon from New York. Lonely means vulnerable, so Scott keeps stalking her until she leaves. Wallace and Sis remind Scott he should break up with the high school girl before cheating with a pink-haired one. The dude's not even on base one with both of them, so technically, that's not even cheating. If the guy ever gets a chance. No ring. Not a bad thing. The next day, Scott browses to order something from Amazon, so Ramona will deliver it. Let's hope she's the only delivery girl in Toronto. He waits in front of the door, waiting for the package he ordered a second ago. The bell rings, but it's knives. They hang out, but the poor guy keeps thinking about Ramona. 
The next day, Stephen shares again a show for their band at the Toronto International Battle of the Bands. They'll go versus Crash and the Boys, the best option for their virgin band. The two should have a feature. Scott has another dream where he sees Ramona skating by and follows her to his own door. He wakes up, rushes to the front door, and guess what? Opens the door before Ramona rings the bell. Scott asks her out. She's cold as ice. He asks again, and annoyed, she agrees. Whoa, does it really work that way? I used to throw a bag on a girl's head right after the first no. They're out, and it goes pretty smooth. Dark, snowy night. Ramona takes a subspace shortcut door to escape the cold. Yes, that's how Canadians escape the cold. They get to Ramona's apartment. Sweet. Some hot tea to warm up the feelings, and they make out. Whoa, that's a nice shortcut. Constantly dream of those. They proceed to the bed, but Ramona decides not to clap with Scott tonight. It's okay, bro. I hope you have some internet traffic on your phone. So get to the bathroom when she sleeps. But I suppose a kiss is more than a win. My man stays the night, and the next day invites Ramona to the Battle of the Bands. Moving on to the battle, we see Ramona, Wallace, Stacy, Scott's brother, and her boyfriend Jimmy. Wallace immediately turns hunter mode on. And here's Knives. Hooray! She kisses Scott in front of Ramona. Nice one. I honestly believe girls are on another level. She felt it was the right time to conquer Scott back. The man immediately runs away from the scene. Perfect dad material. Mine did the same when mom confronted him until one day he ran away too far. Don't worry, it's a good ending story. He came back 15 years after finding out I'm a successful YouTuber. Meanwhile, Crash and the boys play a great set, which freaks out Steven. Time for the virgin band to go up. They rock when Matthew Petal suddenly flies through the roof. He's here to fight Scott. They get into a big fight. Anime stuff. Turns out Matthew is one of Ramona's seven evil ex-lovers. Oh geez, that's a big number. Or a small one? Not sure. By the rules of the world, Scott has to defeat all seven to go out with Ramona. Imagine this is our world. Poor Pete Davidson would keep fighting for Kim 24-7. After a solid battle that turned from an anime movie to an Indian game machine, Scott wins. And Matthew bursts into a bunch of coins. And Wallace made out with Jimmy if you're following the gay arc. Scott and Ramona go on a bus where she explains that they are now dating, but he still must defeat all her evil ex-lovers. Merely six to go. Easy peasy. Scott tells Wallace he needs a place to have a date with Ramona tonight. Wallace is ready to leave, but only if Scott breaks up with Knives right now. Scott doesn't want to because it'll be too hard, but goes to call Knives anyway. What a coincidence. She's right here stalking you. Oh boy, and you thought dating high schoolers is simple. Knives invites Scott to a birthday party to meet her parents and shares that she's in love with him. Wonder how you escape this situation. Scott breaks up anyways. Well, at least the boy got some balls. Meanwhile, both bands practice for the next round of their rock tournament. Scott is too driven by his new new girlfriend, so he makes Neil cover him in the band. Wallace goes to the castle where they film a movie starring Lucas Lee. Scott and Ramona enjoy their date. Their date goes fine, but Scott feels uncomfortable once the conversation turns to their past. Scott shares a story about the girl who dumped him after her band, Clash of Demon Hen, got a huge record deal. Scott feels uncomfortable, so the couple proceeds to watch the movie shoot. And what do you know? Turns out Lucas Lee was one of Ramona's evil exes. Seriously? Captain America? Who's gonna be the boss then? Robert Downey Jr.? Her boy doesn't stand a chance. Scott goes against Lucas, who puts his whole stunt doubles team versus our boy, like it was easy before. Scott performs decent and manages to beat the stuntman, but Lucas is too powerful. When the power is not an option, turn the slime mode on. Scott challenged Lucas to perform a skateboard trick on a crappy long rail. Lucas, an ex-skateboarder, cannot refuse in front of the girls. Lucas goes for a trick ride but goes too fast and explodes. That was a nice one for Ramona, who left during the fight without saying bye. Then what was the point of all this? Scott calls her the next day, but she doesn't answer. Wallace says the boy must fight for his dreams if he really wants the girl, and he desperately needs Scott to move out and don't feel guilty. The dialogue breaks when Scott's ex, Envy, calls. She finds out about his new girl and hangs the phone. Oops, you shouldn't have given up the name so fast. In an alleyway, Scott is randomly attacked by a young teenage punk girl named Roxy Richter. He says he's not really in the mood for this, so she leaves. Wow, if only it worked like that with bullies in high school, I wouldn't have jumped out. Scott goes to the coffee shop where his sis works to talk to her, but she is subbed by Julie, who keeps swearing at Scott for going out with Ramona. Who is here, by the way? Perfect talk about how they don't want their past to affect their current relationship. Suddenly, Envy appears behind her. Turns out her band is playing in Toronto tonight and she invites Scott and his friends, including Ramona, to come by and listen. So what? Just don't go, man. You ain't got enough girl issues? Ah, forget it. They still go. Ramona tries to talk with Scott but prefers not to discuss his past. While the gay concilium back at Wallace's place try to reason with Scott. Envy is the past, man. Listen to the homo homies. They're always better at relationships. Scott gets his balls in his hands and agrees to leave Envy in the past, before it turns out that Steven decided to open for Envy's band. And Knives goes too. She's extremely jealous of Scott's new girlfriend, so she also colors her hair blue. I don't know. Women logic. At the concert, we finally understand Knives' plan. She goes out with young Neil to stay close with Scott. So my mom was right. Keep away from women. They're evil. We also find out that the basis of Envy's band, Todd Ingram, is another one of Ramona's evil exes. What a coincidence. I mean, seriously, Ramona's only been in Toronto for a month, but still is dated with half the city. How? Envy invites the whole group backstage where they very awkwardly sit together. Could you believe there were six women in the room and Scott dated four of them? Seriously? I believe I undervalued my boy Pilgrim. 
Knives acts like an overexcited fan and annoys Envy, so Dodd punches her. Whoa, he crossed the line here. I mean, hitting a girl and having that haircut? What is it, Civil War times? Scott pounces, ready to fight, but Todd stops him. Apparently, he has psychic powers because he's a vegan and went to vegan academy. Oh, now I understand the hype around it. Personally, I'm a carnivore, and I thought vegans do it to stop cows from farting. Well, whatever. Scott and Todd fight a bit, but vegan boy is too powerful. That's why Scott challenges him to a base battle. Oh, too bad. Todd wins again. Scott offers Todd some coffee with soy milk. Pilgrim's tricks work. The soy milk was actually milk. Badass vegan police arrives and de-veganizes Todd, who turns into coins. Like that wasn't enough? The whole group proceeds to the clash at the Demon Head's after party. And guess what? Another Ramona's ex arrives. This time, it's that crazy girl Roxy who threatened before. Roxy is another one of Ramona's evil exes. Looks like Ramona went through a lesbian phase for a few weeks. My ex called it a phase too, but I'm still waiting for her to return. But this time, Ramona decides to defend Scott herself. Finally, some support from the sloth. She pulls out a giant sledgehammer from her purse and fights Roxy. Not even surprised though. Girls' purses are a real Pandora's box. Roxy tells Ramona that it only counts if Scott fights her according to the rules. Our boy refuses to fight a girl. He prefers to give pain by dating them. So Ramona takes him and uses his body to fight Roxy. Scott finds her erogenous zone and wins. So, it's in the back of the knee? That's why I used to hit and miss every time. After the fight, Scott enjoys booze and gets angry at Ramona for having too many exes. Feel you, bro, but that was your pick. Before leaving, Ramona hands him a list of all the evil exes. The next on the list are the Kata Yanagi twins. Whoa, this girl really tried everything in his life. Turns out they're also the next rivals in the Battle of the Bands. At the concert, we see a huge band battle as Ramona watches with her final ex, Gideon Graves. The two bands create giant electrical monsters that fight, and Scott's band wins. Extra Life pops up and Scott grabs it. Outside, Scott talks with Ramona. And guess what? The B-word decided to get back with her ex Gideon. And that's where you learn the lesson of your life. Never chase the P-word. But Gideon here says he liked the band and wants to sign them. Not the best moment, Scott won't sign. But the rest of the band will and they use young Neil taking Scott's place on bass. That's the second lesson of life. Bands always split up and most of the time because of girls. Scott is left in miserable self-pity. But Wallace snaps him out of it and tells him to go fight for Ramona. Scott goes to the secret nightclub where the band is playing. He arrives and tells Gideon he will fight him for Ramona because he loves her. He immediately achieves the power of love and pulls a giant flaming sword out of his chest. Nah bro, love works in reverse. Scott fights Gideon's servants and then Gideon himself. But Gideon is too strong and breaks his sword. He's about to finish poor Scott but Knives arrives, saving Scott from Gideon. Don't get confused, she's not here to save Scott but to kill Ramona. Honestly, this girl is the best character in the movie. They start an epic fight and Gideon vs Scott joins them. Scott stops the girls from fighting while evil Gideon stabs Scott in the back. So, poor Scott dies. Scott is in the desert, alone and dead. Ramona joins him, discussing what the hell are they fighting for anyway. Scott uses the extra life and returns to the scene's beginning. They repeat the fight with Gideon until he asks him who he's fighting for. Scott says himself and gains the power of self-respect, pulling out another giant sword from his chest. Oh right, and I couldn't understand what there was that Scott lacks. Some self-respect. This time, Scott launches himself at Gideon and defeats him. Knives appears again, but now Scott stops her admits he cheated on both of them and takes full responsibility. Gideon gets back up, so Knives and Scott team up to defeat Gideon. They beat him with the help of Ramona and he disappears. Whoa, that was hard to follow. But wait, that's not the end. Nega Scott, an evil version of Scott, arrives. But now, Scott has to fight alone. The girls go outside. They wait and when the door opens, Nega Scott and Scott are walking out talking friendly. Scott tells them he's really a nice guy and they're going to meet for brunch next week. Ramona leaves, telling Scott she doesn't want to make him another evil ex. Scott looks at Knives, but she tells him to go after Ramona. The hell you've been fighting for anyways. Knives is too cool for him anyways. True. Scott catches up to Ramona and they get together. Scott and Ramona go through another subspace door as the camera pans into the sky. Moral of the story? Just stick to your right hand.